like to thank you for all being here. But uh, I know uh, with uh, being on the land that we live on is Treaty 8, and it belongs to all of us, not just to the Treaty 8. Treaty 8 was just a piece of paper that was written between uh, uh, governmental agencies and, uh, and uh, First Nations. But we all live on this land together. That's why we just acknowledge the First Nations as being the first people. And uh, I speak Cree, and thank you, uh, Thank you for that because I am the first, we are the first peoples here, the First Nations, that's why first, right? So anyway, <clears throat> along with that, one of the things that uh, does happen in my world and everybody else's world is that we lose people. So this is one of the times that I'd like to uh, gather everybody and uh, either you could stand or you could sit. We're gonna take uh, 30 seconds of our time to reflect, to uh, just remember the ones that have left us in the last year and beyond, okay? Hi, hi. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll we'll get right into the the crux of what we do in Chat One, and it's uh, this year uh, the council and mayor we voted that a uh, three percent tax hike. So that's some of the stuff that we do as a council as we determine what uh, is good for the community and uh, for the taxpayers. So that, that was one of the things. And it's a major thing because we don't get asked all the time of, oh, how much tax are you gonna, where does the taxes go? So all, all we're, uh, we, when we get questions, we get, the main one I get asked is about the potholes, you know? So, but that's, that, that's <laughs> physical stuff, right? It's stuff that we drive over every day. We recognize that it's there. We recognize that this is there and it should be attended to, right? And we do the best uh, with what we got. So that's why I, I talk about taxes and I talk about infrastructure. That meaning our roads and our uh, sewer systems that we uh, maintain. And one of the greatest things that I thought when I sat with our engineer, uh, Desiree a Leblanc, she, uh, she, she did a five-year plan on our infrastructure that was to uh, maintain roads. And then well, while we're doing this, Let's dig and make sure that our uh, sewer system is taken care of. So we'll replace that so we're not digging twice. So I thought, man, this is, uh, uh, why didn't people think of this before? It probably was thought of, but she brought that to us, which was very important to uh, Chowton because if we'd have to dig again, that just adds cost to, to what we already have. And uh, some of the costs that we incur is some of the, is a million dollars, you know, a round roundabout figure on street, one street, right? So we've got this plan of continuing one, uh, two per year, and we did some uh, paving. And if you noticed, if you've been down the Windrum School, that road there just uh, from uh, west to east or east to west, uh, we did that paving there, and that was part of the, some of the plans that the worst sections of town. So hopefully in the next uh, five years, we have five major uh, streets recovered and uh, put pavement and uh, sewer system, the lines put in. So that's some of the stuff that uh, Chetwin is doing with the tax dollars. It's not just Chetwin, oh, we're gonna go do that and uh, the council is doing that. No, Chetwin, anybody that pays taxes, uh, it, that's uh, where it goes. The majority of that stuff goes. <clears throat> so with that, I'd just like to read something uh, from our uh, uh, Auditor, uh, District of Chetland, we have completed the interim audit of the District of Chetland for the year ending December uh, uh, 2022. The purpose of our audit is to express our opinion of the financial statements. The audit includes considera considerations of internal controls relevant to the preparations of financial statements in order to design audit procedures that are appropriate in, in the circumstances but not for the purpose of expressing an opinion on the effect effectiveness of the internal controls. 
Matters that are reported to the mayor and council are limited to those deficiencies and the auditors I identified during the audit and the auditor has concluded are of sufficient importance to merit being reported to those uh, charged with governance. We are pleased to advise that our auditor, our audit procedures have revealed no major weaknesses in internal controls and that we found the system of internal controls are functioning adequately and minor issues that we found were discussed with the director of finance. Uh, and administration. So with that, we we hire our auditor to do all this stuff. And it's very important when we do audits that uh, they look into everything. They were there for weeks. And sometimes they start a month and a half prior to this. They start looking. They have uh, apprentices. I found that uh, when they, they come talk to the mayor, uh, the auditor comes and sits in my office and he asks, do, do I have any questions? And one of the important things he says, you are the responsible for what goes on. If you have any questions, this is the time. And if you don't, you could always reach out to us. We will, we will address the problem and we will come back and we will look at it. So these are very important things to council and to Chetwin. So the audit is a very important part. So I, I, with that, I'd just like to mention the Chamber of Commerce, uh, the membership. I think it's 145, uh, Naomi? Dep yeah, it depends on the, on the um, amount of employees that folks have, but on average, it's usually anywhere between okay. 140 to 160. Okay, thank you. Uh, i just like to, I don't know, we we have uh, reports out there, and this is uh, one of the reports from uh, the Chamber, and I just got some excerpts from that. Uh, from uh, from the executive director. Each year we continue to add in initiatives to promote and advance members' business interests by providing opportunities for networking, vis visibility, credibility, uh, celebrating successes, advocating for business interests, and supporting the economic growth of our community. This is found in the <coughs> annual Chamber of Commerce report. And this is uh, Naomi's report that she puts out annually. So this is some of the stuff. What affects our commerce? Local government has limited influence on significant policies, uh, decisions made at a federal and provincial level. Uh, I wrote about this in November, if uh, anybody wrote uh, what I had uh, statement in November. Our small communities generally keep little wealth despite uh, huge, huge impacts by the policies that affect uh, the most uh, most by affected by most and are out of our control. That meaning that uh, the federal and provincial government make decisions and some of the stuff, the BC Hydro Dam, uh, we were just talking about the piece and uh, uh, rowing, what, what did you call that? Uh, paddle for the peace, right? Saving our waters, right? So uh, we, they made a decision. Ongoing treaty entitlements. We talked about treaty uh, and uh, the entitlements of uh, treaty. So that that is some of the decisions and uh, natural gas <clears throat> pipelines, uh, T TC Energy, Coastal Gas Link, Soraris Murphy. You heard all those names. Well, not so much TC Energy unless you listen to the news in the last uh, couple of we uh, couple of days where they had a major uh, uh, leak in in the U.S. Uh, they are. Uh, their head, uh, Coastal Gas Link belongs to TC Energy. Uh, the Caribou Recovery Plan. So it's a, called the Partnership Agreement. Uh, Blueberry First Nations court cases. Court cases limiting sawmill fiber acquisition. Old growth forest legislation. So these are just a few of the things that uh, we deal with on a daily basis uh, when it comes to our, uh, comes through, uh, comes, uh, past our desk, I guess. So when we when we do that, so <clears throat> it, it, it's kind of a struggle to to try to fix stuff that you don't have the tools because you aren't given the tools. So it's a it's quite a hard, hard to swallow, I guess that Phil. So anyway, uh, I have a few things that we've done here in Chetwin. So with that, uh, I said we got the P 
Paving Veterans Way, 46th Street, Northeast 5th Avenue, uh, Wabi Crescent. Uh, we had a little issues there. It got cold and they didn't finish a project. Uh, that'll happen uh, in the spring of 2023. Uh, two well-used dog parks. I, people that have furry friends, right? It's used. Uh, so, and uh, one of the questions was lighting. You know, we live in darkness uh, half of the time in the winter, right? So if you got your uh, dog and you, you go out to the dog park and you need the light. So anyway, that was one, some of the questions that we don't, we, we put the dog park out in the summer when there's a lot of light, right till 10, 11 o'clock, and then all of a sudden it gets dark and says, hey, I want to go to the dog park, but it's, uh, it's pretty dark. <laughs> so anyway, <clears throat> Uh, Two-year project downtown revitalization phase one in 2022 and scheduled for completion in 2023. Improved access and a strong focus of the downtown core as a cultural and community heart of Chatwin. So we did that uh, with uh, uh, some help. She, uh, one of the ladies did surveys down down at our farmer's market and went around a few, uh, few uh, uh, merchants asking questions. So we had a fairly good idea on, and this is some of the stuff. All this report is in uh, the Chetwin uh, Facebook on our, uh, on our webpage. So if you want to look at more in details, you could just go into, the, into that webpage and look for it. And uh, so uh, the Fire Smart Initiative, like fuel load uh, reduction and the free assessment of, uh, to reduce community uh, wildfire risk. 2022 saw, uh, saw fuel reduction exercises in the Legion, Rodeo and Crown uh, Green Spaces. And this uh, will be coming, will be an ongoing thing in 2023. So if you've uh, driven past uh, the bridge heading towards Dawson there over the creek and you look to the right, that was one of the biggest things that you'd notice is that it got cleared out. So th those are the, things that the fire smart uh, were trying to address some of the fuel on the ground. So all that stuff was taken away and it looked really good because if a fire gets in there, then uh, we're kind of in trouble the way uh, the world and uh, the fire is going. So anyway, <clears throat> uh, walkways paving and lighting in front of the rec center, uh, four successful business facades improved projects uh, with uh, NDIT. Grant assistance, uh, it's ongoing in 2023, so there'll be more in 2023 for, uh, uh, to add to the facade. And that's the front of the building. Uh, the DO uh, District of Chatwin partners with uh, Tansy Friendship Center uh, for Seniors Bus Program. So that's another thing that uh, sometimes we overlook is uh, societies, uh, nonprofit, right? So. They bring in uh, people, they bring in uh, wages, they, they bring in services that uh, are dear to our hearts, not, oh yeah, well, we've got gonna build a pipeline and we send it through, right? Uh, here we, we have people that help out on a daily basis, monthly basis, yearly basis, and year after year. So the Friendship Center has been here for quite a, quite a few years. And I just want to applaud the Friendship Center right now at this time. I invited them, made sure that they were here because it's very important. Societies are important to us because nonprofit to profit, we have to be say that these are the important people on the ground. So when they'll always be here, and it's very important to me, I'd like to uh, thank Laurel. Fiona. Fiona and your uh, board member Lucy. Lucy. Hank. Hank. President. Okay. <laughs> Val. 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 Yeah. Staff. Yes. Sam, finance director. Yeah. And Denise. And uh, I'd like to thank them for that uh, opportunity to have that in our community. Because if we don't recognize that the society does matter, we talk about uh, saying, your, your, uh, on your uh, card, what does it read, right? Local? Local? Shop local? Shop local. V local, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. So, so some of those things that uh, are, are pretty important. And the other thing that come, 
coming down the road is uh, our education. Education is a big part. One of the things I've uh, talked with, and we met, I think, in 2019, Janet, with uh, Northern Lights College. College. So we talked about uh, international students and housing. And then uh, this year, we have a new housing uh, minister. Uh, and it is Ravi Kalan. And he's a minister of housing. And it be, it's becoming a ministry on its own on housing. So they've really directed uh, the force. Uh, well. Maybe the force be with you, but uh, hopefully it helps us. So <clears throat> in the north, we have to be able to, uh, we will be contacting him. I, When you have the position of uh, mayor, you get to talk to some of these people. And I know Ravi and I, uh, Mr. Colon, uh, Minister Colon. So I know him and that's important of networking. And uh, it's important that we go out as council to meet these ministers and the opposition too. And we were sitting here, what, month and a half ago or two months ago? We brought, yeah, we brought seven. Yes, we brought the opposition in and they were happy to be here. And they, 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 talk about, they talked about us in the legislature, right? They did, they stood up and said, Chatwin is a beautiful place and we were there and this is part of British Columbia. And that's what uh, the, the mayor tells people too, is that we are British Columbians too. We deserve the same rights as anybody else in this province, in this country. So that's some of the stuff that I, as an advocate for Chatwin, and uh, the thing that always uh, comes up is our carvings, right? Carvings, and uh, <laughs> so that's important. And uh, I talk about our rec center. I, I personally talk about that and say this is, this is some of the stuff that we do here in Chatwin uh, for the retention and to go back to the housing. It retains doctors, it retains nurses, laborers, managers. This is a big part when we talk to uh, uh, Minister Colon, is that we address these problems. We have to address them at a high level. Somebody told me once, he says, why you reach for the sky and pull down a star, right? So this is, and they say, well, that's pretty high. So I just think it says, no, you have to be able to, you have to be able to think that way in order for it to, get, to be achieved. It's not, not something that we'll just continue to move on. It, we can't, we've got to be able to move in a direction that's going to be uh, sufficient enough to help Chatwin. And sometimes I get uh, what he called uh, selfish because I am. I believe in Chatwin. I believe in what goes on in Chatwin. I believe in the people that live here, want to work here, want to play here. And that's when the rec center comes in. We, re we retain something, we attain the goals of being able to swim, dance, uh, curl, and all the stuff. You had a climbing wall, we said that climbing wall's got to go. We put the kids in. When we start with kids, right out to seniors, then we all have this housing thing that we have to address. It all comes down to housing, to, to be able to house all the students because when they uh, go places, they will tell people about Chatwin. He says, yes, that's a good place to live, right? So, well, <clears throat> at this time, I would like to, uh, to introduce a new council to the chamber. Uh, the new councillors, Julia Nelson, did she just leave? Okay. And Andrea Smith and Kayla McDonald. So those are our new councillors and uh, the ones that uh, remaining were Janet Wark, Mel Deck, and Clay Bazandowski. So we have a mix of new and uh, people that were there before, like myself and uh, Mel. I don't want to say old. <laughs> <laughs> and old uh, counselors. <laughs> so anyway, that's, uh, that, that's very important that we uh, understand that some of the stuff that we do that we retain some of the knowledge that was, uh, we had for the last four years and beyond and bring it forward. So it helped me out. And uh, one other thing that happened this year was that we uh, hired a new CAO. So and that's uh, Steve McLean. Yep, he was at the rec center if uh, people uh, had business to do with the rec center. He operated the rec center and managed uh, there. So, and now he's moved up to uh, CAO. So we have, uh, 
good experience in our in our mess. So uh, thank you, Steve, for uh, taking the job. And uh, some of the opportunities that uh, Chetland uh, gives us is uh, it's kind of worldly, right? Because we <clears throat> we have our opportunity to uh, train people in the society. We have people that we train that uh, will continue the the education, I guess I'd like to say apprentice uh, format of that uh, type of work. And then I have people that left Chetwin and that are going to leave. They, they give us this, uh, uh, says, yes, I'm going to, but I trained well here and I'm going to take it out. I says, yes, just, yeah, as long as you're doing the job that you, you uh, trained to do here in Chetwin, take it out there. And, as long as it's being uh, you're, you're you're using your education there. <clears throat> so uh, one of the things that uh, if you have any questions for me and uh, money questions, I don't have any. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but the the council the council and uh, Chatwin we put out a financial statement every year. And it's, uh, and it's uh, for everybody. It's open to everybody that wants to look at it and uh, go through it. And we have a financial officer. And he says, they could just call me. They only just call me. You know, if you want something, just, just call. And uh, that's, that's probably the, the simple, simplest form, unless you got to go, want to go through it and you got the items that you'd like to question. And uh, some of the questions, too, is that why did council uh, make that decision? And it's all in there. It's all, all in there. It's all uh, public uh, knowledge. So uh, we, we encourage people to do that, right? Because we want you to know. We want you to know what a council and, uh, and mayor is doing. Because it's your town. It's our community. It's our district. It's our surrounding area. We all have, uh, uh, have an opportunity to put our two cents in. That's all I got is two cents. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, some of the stuff that we've done and uh, yeah, we are contributing the new, as uh, Naomi says, some of the new is the library. In 2023, we'll have a new library, right? And uh, we're getting a study done to do uh, to, uh, a feasibility study for a fire hall. And that's one of the big things, uh, talking about safety and fire uh, smart. We need... Uh, to be able to house our fire department so that they are professionals. They are in a professional building so that we will have it for more than just 10 years. Uh, my idea, and I give that to others, is that I don't want it just for 15 years. I don't want it just for 30 years. It should be good enough so that we last for at least 50 years and then look at it because if we're Right now, uh, our uh, little small building that we have, it, we can't even get a, a regular size truck that's made this year into it because of the height. If there's a little bit of snow, compact snow, they have to clear that out first so the, so the truck doesn't hit the top of the garage door. So, you know, we, we're, we're really struggling in that fashion and that fact of how we uh, manage. So... What the manage, uh, managing means that we're going to look at our feasibility study, we'll bring it to stakeholders. When we say stakeholders, we mean everybody here. It'll be open to the public, right? Once we uh, decide on what we're going to do, it'll be open to the public. Everybody will get a chance to give us their opinion on that. Uh, two big things, that'd be the library and this. And some of the stuff that we did this year was that they were important. Was dog park was one of them, and uh, another one to uh, really did us. I guess we were kind of proud of that, and uh, so was uh, Laura, uh, uh, past uh, councillor Weisgerber. Is that uh, we we did the spray park? How wonderful was that, right? I mean, <laughs> we we even had kids. Uh, you'd drive by there, and the and it was raining. <laughs> <laughs> it was raining. They're playing in the splash park, right? So it was a great uh, thing that Chetwin and uh, and staff for finding the grant for that uh, for that uh, spray park and the Peace River Regional District because we are in great partnership with the Peace River Regional District uh, that we manage their uh, their uh, rec center and uh, pool, right? I forgot to mention we we have the only wave pool and 
million miles. <laughs> so it, it's uh, quite quite the thing that we do have here in Chowan. And uh, I I had a letter from this uh, lady from I believe it was Saskatoon. Her uh, her son lived in Hythe, and he was a truck driver. He hauled through Chetwin, and he seen the seen the carvings. He says, "Man, I gotta stop you! Man, I gotta stop you!" He never stopped, and he wrote to his uh, his uh, sister and his mom. So his mom and his sister visited in uh, in uh, Hythe, and they drove to Chetwin. And they were in the office, they were taking pictures, so I go out there and talk to them. And she just wrote me a letter there uh, last week. What a wonderful place this would be, you know. And, uh, and I said, did you guys go to the rec center? And she said, yes, what a wonderful place. <laughs> Another wonderful place, right? So we have some opportunities to, to attract people and retain them by the stuff that we have in Chetwin. And from societies, to chambers, to the council, and to everybody in between, on how we manage our uh, business here in Chowan. And it's hospitality, right? And uh, the other thing, when they phone me, uh, all the ministers, I says, how's it in Chowan? Sunny and warm. <laughs> sunny and warm, rather, even if it's snowing, it's sunny and warm in Chowan. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, with that, i uh, just like to <clears throat> say that uh, please be kind to each other. Let us try to always be careful of what we say so that we remember uh, that very real power of how we speak to each other. Let us try to ensure that our words, meanings remain true, our thoughts so that their substance, substance is not devalued or altered in any way, that devalue them or alter in any way that reduces their meaning. So when I wrote uh, that uh, words matter, they certainly do. So be careful on the choice of words when you get into difficult situations. It does, uh, when I mean difficult situations, if you're upset, that's what I mean. Now, why should a div difficult situation be difficult to talk about? It says if you're upset, you have to be careful of your words and make sure re you're responsible for them. You have to be responsible for your words, and they do matter. Thank you very much. Yes. So, as a nonprofit, I don't know if many people know that the Chamber of Commerce is a nonprofit society as well. We're registered under the Society's Action and the Board of Trade. So, some people like uh, I, I have to correct a lot of people. Some people think that the Chamber of Commerce is employed by the District of Chatham. We are not. We're completely independent. We're completely different. But we have a wonderful partner working with working relationship together, which is what you need in order to have a successful economy and a success, successful community. So do we have any questions from the mayor today? Where do I get my suits? <laughs> How about my ties? <laughs> I get them from Moore's. Yeah. I get them from Moore, and I got, I got this one from Diane when she was in uh, Whistler. Yeah, she, she got the tie. Okay. Yeah. Rebecca's got some yeah. questions. I just, you mentioned, um, Mr. Mayor, that you guys have a five-year plan to do some more work on the roads. Do you know if you have Gerwin Road and Westgate Road, the two last dirt roads in Chetland, um, slated on that? Uh, I, I would have to ask Desiree. I, I believe that she will go on year-to-year -year basis on which road is, uh, is uh, the worst at that time. And uh, she's, I think, I believe she's flexible on, okay, this one, well, I picked this one this year, but this one really is getting worse than this one. So that's, uh, and I don't have that, but I believe uh, Steve is taking a, taking a note, and uh, we will... Uh, um, there one in Westgate. So Westgate's by the cemetery, the other one's down by the um, sewer treatment plant. Um, yeah, for sure. I guess a portion of Campbell is gravel still. Yeah. 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 So, do we have any other questions? I have one. I missed Monday's meeting. I had the merchant Christmas party on Saturday, and I was incredibly sore on Monday, so I did not make it. <laughs> um, what was the update on the library? Where is that going to be? The library, yeah. Well, uh, we know where it's going to be, but where is it going to be in the sense of I know that there was some extra funds being requested? Uh, that uh, We've uh, moved that to our uh, 2023 budget um, uh, committee meeting.
So we were discussing that at that time. Once we get that figured out, uh, the PRD asked for some funds uh, to be contributed, and that's a decision of council and mayor if we are going to contribute. Right now, we've uh, got a million dollars into uh, into the library. And uh, just on that point of a million dollars, uh, where, where can we get a million dollar building you know, for for face value, for what we're going to get with the with what the PRD and Chetwin and the public library board is putting in, so there's three partners there. So anyway, uh, the answer will come back to us once council and uh, we'll get the budget. Uh, maybe in the new year, I'll have a report for you and uh, on what, what council had decided. And you're all all invited to our council meetings. We'd like to see a few people to attend. I know it's kind of like uh, boring sometimes, but uh, you know it, it it does give you information. So and without without being it. tired and uh, <laughs> attender. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, are the 2022 and 2023 district budgets available to the taxpaying citizens? Yes, they will be once they get finalized. The 2022. Yeah. Is I but, access that too? They do. Uh, Steve, do you? Yep. Yeah, all, all of the financial information we do our year process, and then mm -hmm. uh, it, it, everything is good. There's a financial report, and all gets published. Perfect. Yeah. So, so <coughs> access it just by going into the district office? Generally, yeah. If there's something specific, it might not go down to the line items, it's all the way down to the yeah. very okay. end vote. But again, if you phone us, if you phone uh, Kevin Branson or uh, mm -hmm. finance director or myself, and we'll get you the information. <laughs> stuff to them. I just want to make sure that I yeah. can get it. So. And that, that was a letter I uh, read at the beginning. The auditor says everything there is, yep, above, yep. And I do have one more question that I've been asked a million times by people who have been popping in the office and stuff. In the downtown light up, the BC mm -hmm. Hydro poles, they've mm -hmm. been changed out so you are no longer allowed to hang the decorations, yes. right? Right. That's correct? That's correct. Thank you. I just want to make sure it's right because everybody keeps asking them. I'm quite sure they're not allowed to hang stuff on the BC Hydro Pools. Yeah. Uh -huh. I uh, have a question about the housing. You had mentioned that you were really pushing initiative into student housing. Is there any conversations happening with senior housing? Just for the simple fact that right now our hospital is overrun with people who are waiting to get into the long-term care. And I personally feel like if there was a little more attention into that aspect, we could also put a little more effort into like the healthcare as well. Yes, uh, right. Right now, that uh, specific housing part of it with the seniors, uh, it, it takes a little bit of uh, time. But with the housing, with our new uh, minister, that I believe we'd be able to push more into that kind of uh, uh, position. One of the things that uh, Northern Lights. Uh, with uh, students, we want to be able to have somebody come in and have housing, maybe 12 units, and the rest for seniors because the location of downtown is pretty important, like the clinic around that area. Uh, the district of Chetwin does own a property in town, and I believe we have some out uh, in that area. So we will be... Uh, in contact with Northern Lights College, and we will be uh, forming a housing committee in uh, 2023. That that will They're be coming, coming up in. on the baby boomers, right? So there's going to be such an influx coming yep. up in our community. So trying to get ahead of the planning in that, I feel, would be extremely beneficial to our community, not yeah. only for our medical system but also for our people. Yes, and I think this was 10 years ago. This should have been happening, right? The, it, so that's just, why I was curious, the yes. student versus the immediate as well. Because right yes. now, there's no housing. Well, there is limited housing. Limited, limited housing. Correct. So Yes, that, that'll be on the housing committee's agenda. It'll be part of what uh, the committee will be. And the committee will come back to council. And there will be council members on, on the committee. And uh, we will ask the public for, for their input on uh, seats on that committee. Will they be open meetings? Uh, that will be up to the, the the committee, and then once it comes to council, then it'll be open, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Becca, you also spoke on the um, the process of 
district and council voting on the extra four hundred thirty thousand dollars that the regional district is asking for for the library. Is there is there any public input on that decision at all, or is it just strictly mayor and council decide on the taxpaying dollars going to the regional district? It it'll come out it'll come out once uh, mayor and council uh, decides that okay this is uh, the best uh, that we got from mayor and council. Then it'll be at a public meeting. And then we could debate it there. Yeah, you will you will be able to speak, and if you have an opinion, either get a hold of myself and Steve and get some time to be able to speak on that matter. We give uh, the public an opportunity to speak at our council meetings. There's slotted time, so you will be able to have your opinion on that when by coming to our meeting and saying this is I would like to speak on this uh, this part of the agenda. Yeah. Tough question, but it's the question. What is the plan for addressing the medical care in Chilton in the upcoming year? So not having the hospital closed or on um, <coughs> inversion, inversion yeah, or five out of seven days a week. So do we have a plan? What kind of partnership does the district have with Morgan Health? Totally. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The, the tough question is an easy answer because we don't have any control over Northern Health and how they uh, perform. The only thing that we have control over is retention, trying to make sure that we have housing uh, suitable for these uh, doctors, nurses, and technicians, right? But as for Northern Health and uh, uh, putting together doctors and nurses into Chatwin, that is their mandate. They are the ones responsible for that. As for Chetwin, we give them the best ability to live in Chetwin, housing, rec center, and walking paths, and all that stuff, dog parks, and everything else. But we don't have the ability right now. If we did, you know, that, that would be something that we would definitely be in, in top, top of the list, right? Because it's very important. Mel? I just have a, two bits to put in yeah. on the Northern Health. Uh, ever since I've come on council, it's been eight years, and we've, we've been holding their feet to the fire year in and year out. And it's been a struggle at times. It's been bite your tongue at times, but we're, and they, they, they seem to be catching on a little bit that we aren't going to go away. And we're just, we're continually after. There's been no lack of time or sleepless nights. Uh, from from council, uh, past and present, everybody's been working hard on it. It's just sometimes you're you're talking to a wall. Okay. I didn't want to put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think we wanted to be to the end, right? It's good to have that clarity, though, because I think yeah. there is um, an assumption that you guys are a lot more responsible yeah. for the medical care of the community. We would like to be, you know, we would like to be part of that <clears throat> process, but. Stuff policies that uh, the provincial government makes, they're making it on this, on the populace, right? The people that millions and millions of people living south, right? So when they make that decision, we only have one vote here, and that's uh, Bernier, right? Yeah, we only have that one vote, and and what he stood stood uh, in front of us one day, and he told us, he says, doesn't matter who's in power. If we're in power, I only have one vote. Down there, they've got hundreds of votes, right? So anyway, that's some of the stuff that we deal with. And that's why when I mentioned networking is a very important part of what we do and how we uh, attain stuff. So that we have to know the ministers. We have to know their uh, deputies. The deputies are the ones that take the notes and they're the ones that give it to the minister. So if you could get inside and talk to the deputy mm -hmm. minister, then you have something. And the minister for sure will make, uh, she will make the decision or he will make the de decision on whether or not it goes forward. And that's something yeah. that she has been working on as well through the BC Chamber of Commerce. We meet with several uh, ministers and deputy ministers throughout the year as well. And that is one thing that's constantly brought up for, uh, for the North is healthcare yeah. and connectivity. With the, um, the, fire the fire department that you guys are considering, the expansion, would that include, because it currently includes our ambulance services within that building? We're, we're just doing the fire hall, right? And the ambulances, uh, they, lease, they lease from us. They lease from us, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's it. Okay. Thank Thank you. More question? Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I love shopping local here, mm -hmm. but I would like more of a variety, like uh, a brand new shopping mall mm -hmm. for us local people. A dollar store that's actually a dollar store, because I find that we pay high prices here um, in an Alaskan way kind of deal, and we're forced to shop outside of our community. And I think we need to challenge that a little bit more. I'd love to see a brand new grocery store that holds wholesale stuff for all of our families throughout the region, like the mm -hmm. rural areas. And like shopping, yeah, is would be a real good clothing store here, you know, for our families. Yeah. Um, and new housing, an option on new housing, yep. an apartment building. Steve. So, <laughs> yep, yep. so there's yep. something that people and I have to like. I'll, I'm jumping on this one. Um, when it comes to people wanting um, more stores and more variety, so I always say economic development in the mm -hmm. district. Their job is to attract business, mm -hmm. and our job as the chamber is to support those businesses to make sure that they can continue and be strong within our community. But lots of people forget. Like, so some people will be like, "Oh, you know, I wish we had a Taco Bell or whatever." But the franchise fees. For something like that is based on populace of the community. So mm -hmm. if somebody wanted to bring in a McDonald's or whatever, it could be mm -hmm. several mm -hmm. million dollars. Just I'm not I'm not oh, saying big, big yeah. franchises. Big franchises, but just yeah. Need, and then well all else needs is we need to be excited entrepreneurs who want to do that, right? Mm -hmm. And that's something else that we at the chamber can assist with. We have all sorts of um, resources and things that can help people with our community futures our job search, our work BC, yeah. there's all sorts of, so we just need those excited people who want to be able to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I do know anybody. And just a side note on the, the gas price, right? It's gone down. I uh, challenged them uh, in 2019. I wrote letters to the, to the SO and Chevron and uh, asked them about the prices and they told me he says well if you don't like this you go to the uh <laughs> higher up so i phoned i phoned texas yep. and uh asked him he says well that's the manager and then the manager says no that's their decision in texas wherever they're making their decision so anyway he says if you don't like that he says go to the competition bureau of british columbia we're all we all could do that we all could write to the uh, competition bureau, and the competition bureau deals with uh, with gouging, right? Yeah. What you're talking about in our house, in our uh, grocery stores, in our retail stores. So that's something that uh, is important. To, if it's important to you enough, it's the competition bureau of British Columbia, and then there's another one that's uh, in Canada. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that that, that I, I don't want to talk about <laughs> that kind of stuff. But, yes. Six and Yeah. Yeah. It's one twenty six. One twenty six. So yeah. we're moving. So we're moving. <laughs> it's, it's just getting expensive to live. Here. It is, and it's gas. Food, yeah. housing, yeah. rent is insane. So it's getting very expensive to live in Shetland. Oh, yeah. yeah. Specifically, Shetland. Yeah. Yeah. We've got higher gas than anywhere around. We've got higher rent. We've got higher groceries. Yeah. So. so we suffer from uh, from being good at being industrial, right? And this is uh, Kanuma. Not blaming Kanuma. I, it could be any company that inflects with... Uh, with members to our community, like workers, right? So, and uh, gas is gas pipeline is going to be done 2024. Maybe that alleviates some of the stuff. But when when you have competition for one one apartment, mm -hmm. then then that's how that stuff goes. But as as for the gas, they drive right through here, right? That's why I tell them you drive right through here. You go to Ground Birch. You go go to. Uh, to Mackenzie Junction, and the gas prices are cheaper there than anywhere else except in Chowan. So that was, uh, and then that's when I was told, go fly a kite. <laughs> go to the Competition Bureau. Challenge those companies, companies to give back to our community then. Uh, so, and uh, 
yeah, ch challenge those companies that are using up our resources to give back to our community, to invest in our community in whatever way they can. Um, I see some pretty big donations from Cyrus Murphy around the community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's definitely yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, one of the questions that was asked me of uh, prior to to this and uh, was uh, how how did uh, you approach uh, Sorares Murphy and what was their answer? So Sorares Murphy and TC Energy, uh, I, I respond. I'm responsible for advocating and pushing, and I missed the boat when they first, uh, when I first sat on the seat of housing to admit, uh, to take a look at housing. So these ones with deep pockets, right, the oil companies, they should have been building a house for their executives, building a house for some of their laborers that come in, and then once they were done, we'd have a house or a manager, doctor, Yes, so that that's one of the things for industry and what you talk about about getting getting inside and talking about this and what we need as a community. You here, you pass right through. Once that pipeline they start sending gas through, it's gone. Right, we're done. We we've you've served your purpose. We've put the rent high. We've uh, that loaf of bread that used to be ninety nine cents is now two ninety nine. So you know this is the stuff that they are responsible for. Uh, we just live in it now. They're coming back to sister that pipeline. Are we cutting a pipeline? Bless you. Are they going to sister the pipeline? Pretty close. I've heard stuff. I can't tell you if it's not. Or, or else I might have to <laughs> get a letter from the executive from <laughs> TC Energy tell, telling people it says, Mayor, uh, so you're, you're responsible for billions of dollars leaving. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any other questions? This has been great. This has been awesome. I wish all my lunches could be like this. <laughs> I just have one last question. Absolutely. Sorry. Does the district have anything in their periphery for advocating for a safe injection site? Uh, not at this time. I don't believe we've... Uh, uh, Port St. John, I've uh, talked to the... Because I, I deal with the Peace River Regional District. They do have one there. And uh, i not uh, sure anybody here. I know the council and uh, mayor haven't uh, dis discussed that yet. Good. Awesome. Thank you so very much.